A local figure in black history is William Cody Spencer, who is actually my great-great-grandfather. Um, and he was really vital in helping um, African Americans in the Martinsville community back then to kind of build their wealth. Mm -hmm. um, so you can you share a little more about William Cody and, and what he did for the community? Yes, so um, William Cody Spencer established Imperial Savings and Loans in 1929. And in 1927, he went to a couple of young black men at High Street um, Church okay. and, you know, d decided to get a savings together to start helping black Americans locally start to save their money. And so by 1929, two years later, they had raised $300. And um, that's when he went and filed articles, articles of incorporation and everything to get Imperial Savings and Loans established. And so this was in 1929, and to my understanding, he would go door to door, you know, in the black community okay. collecting the weekly savings or however often they got paid. Mm -hmm. And he had really established, you know, connections and relationships with mm -hmm. his clients and helped build generational wealth within the black community by helping them create their savings accounts and whatnot. And, um, it was the only black owned and operated um, savings and loan bank in the entire state of Virginia. Wow. So he definitely um, created a, a path for African Americans to establish something of their own. And when you put that with the, uh, the things that Dr. Baldwin put in place for the black community, then you know you can understand why that they were really thriving during that time. You know, as we talk about William Cody and you know him encouraging savings and you know helping African Americans understand the importance of generational wealth, I think it's still important that we recognize um, the effects of things like Jim Crow and slavery and what is how it has impacted the wealth of African Americans. Um, a Harvard a Harvard study um, said that you know the wealth of an African-American family is one-tenth that of a white American family. So you, can you kind of speak to that and what that, you know, the impact of that and what that means today? Well, I mean, when you think about the fact that Mr. Spencer established Imperial Savings and Loans in 1929, right? So when you think about white families and um, generational wealth, it was already being established through slavery. Um, and that has already created a, a, a gap right. in just gener generational wealth between races alone. Um, so even with him starting Imperial Savings and Loans and the amount of work that he was able to do with that, when you think about the Jim Crow era, um, you know, even the funds that they were able to amass within themselves were limited in where they could spend them right. and what they could do with them and just outside of imperial savings and loans there was not much room for black americans to gain loans or funding you know outside of the right. black bank so it was still very much them working against opposition but just what he was able to do with the resources that he had Absolutely. it should not be you know denied but we also can't overlook the fact that it was still a situation where you have to work twice as hard to get a piece of something and it's right. it's just not um it's not comparable to to what you know the generational wealth and what has been left behind for white families whose ancestors were operating through slavery.